Hello everybody and welcome back. I am the Sovereign and this is my court if this is your first time in attendance. Hi, please consider hitting the subscribe button before you leave our kingdom. So a lot of you guys have been asking for me to do a finals type of recap of Miss Universe Thailand. I did an initial reaction video to the preliminary competition and of course I had my favorites list, right? So. Um, we're here to talk about the winner and a lot of you guys had questions. Well, I have questions too. It is very likely that the reaction video for Miss Universe Thailand will only be available to my nobility, my title holders and my Patreon, um, because I, I believe that that reaction is going to be one of my most, um, emotional, I'm pretty sure. So uh, it's very likely that my Viscounts, Barons, possibly my Knights even, will be accessing that video only. Maybe I will make it available for a limited time in the kingdom, possibly, depending on how tragic my reaction truly is. Here are a few clips from my Miss Universe Thailand finals reaction. That's it, that's it, that's it. Competition over and just one. That's it, that is it and just one. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. She was one vying for my uh, favorites list. Number one, I remember her, she had that pretty red dress. Yeah. Is that 29? Does that mean 29? Does that mean 29 in the Thai language? Number. Oh, you are full of it. Oh, you are full of it. I'm living in the multiverse. Did she punch another competitor in the face? The performer was given more confidence and attitude than some of the competitors. Put her in Miss Universe Thailand, please, and thank you. She's killing it. Girl, had you not flubbed during question and answer, you would have been the queen. You'd been the queen, because you're outperforming number two. You outperforming everybody. I'd have made her the queen. That'd have been it. You're calling goose wings? You're calling goose wings? Anchelie Scott Kimmis, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing her name right, is the new Miss Universe Thailand. And if you're remembering from my favorites list, she was not on my list at all. Nowhere to be found. And there are reasons for this. Now, Anne did, does have my favorite advocacy. This was my favorite thing about this woman. This was the one thing where I was just like, God, I wish I could put her on me, my list because her advocacy is body positivity and body acceptance. She is advocating for different types of bodies to be able to be presented on pageant stages, which is an advocacy that you guys have seen me speak about in different videos and also do a full length video on. It was one of like my first earliest videos that I ever wanted to talk about because this was something that I felt was important. Um, I still feel this way, obviously. Pageants really need to relinquish the mindset that in order to be crowned a queen or be a queen or be considered for a major international title, you have to be a size two, size zero type of woman. That is, nonsensical and very unhealthy. So this honestly was my favorite advocacy because it's something that I myself have spoken out about. However, being that I'm biased personally towards that advocacy, I was not going to be biased towards the woman. She did not present well enough for me to consider her for my favorites list. Now, when I make my favorites list, I'm thinking from the position of a Miss Universe judge and what a Miss Universe judge is going to want to crown. I'm looking for the next Miss Universe, period. And I'm going to, I'm always honest with you guys and I'm going to try to be as gentle about this as possible and handhold you through this because I know there's gonna be some people in the comments section that possibly are gonna get their feelings hurt. Your relationship with the truth is not my problem. I will speak truth, however you handle that is on you. So let us walk through this together. 
When a country selects a woman to be crowned queen and sent to Miss Universe, that is that organization and that country saying, this is the woman that the judges should crown the next Miss Universe. When you give a woman a national title and send her off to international competition, you are asking the judges to crown her Miss Universe and put her picture next to Zozie Beanie Toonzy, Catriona Gray, Demi Lee Neal Tebow, Paulina Vega, Andrea Metza. You are asking the Miss Universe organization to put this with all of the past Miss Universes. So when a woman wants to be a Miss Universe, you have to know that you have to be able to stand toe to toe with all the other past queens because that's the mantle that you are trying to join. Now, those of you who are down there, those of you who may be angry at me for not putting her on the list and standing by that decision, I ask you this. Could Anne go toe to toe with Catriona Gray in competition? Could Anne go toe to toe with Zozie Beanie Tunzi in competition? Could she take the crown from Andrea Mezza? I do not think any knowledgeable pageant fan could argue that Anne in her current condition could take out any of the past pageant queens crowned Miss Universe. And that's the position that I was taking when I decided not to put her on my favorites list. Yes, she is a good speaker. And I know there's a lot of people in the comment section who are gonna be like, she's, she's a fantastic speaker though. That's great. This is a pageant, not Jeopardy. Miss Universe is a very demanding competition and it is for that reason that I enjoy it. Miss Universe demands perfection in every aspect of presentation and speaking ability. Miss Universe demands flawless hair, makeup, styling, walking, turns, gowns, faces. They expect all of that and a well-educated, thoroughly knowledgeable queen. It is because of those very high standards that I personally even enjoy a Miss Universe competition. If this suddenly became only a speaking competition, I would not watch. I am letting you guys, this is what Miss America does in my country. They primarily became an interview competition and they lost the pageant fan base. And there's only ever been one Miss America video on this channel and it wasn't a great one. We don't back down from anything. This is just the beginning. We don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. I love how they said they're gonna talk the talk and walk the walk, but there were no walks to be had. It lost its appeal. It lost its level of difficulty. I enjoy an educated woman. I enjoy a knowledgeable woman. And I can get that by sitting in any college level class. I do it daily, okay? I enjoy the escapism of Miss Universe that forces the women to be everything that a great woman can be. It pushes them beyond the bounds of an average woman. As I have said before, Miss Universe is not an average woman. So for those of you in the comment section who are gonna give me the, but she can speak excuse, that's cute, send her to Miss World. That doesn't fly for Miss Universe, not for this competition. Miss Universe is very demanding. So it is for all those reasons that she did not make my favorites list. Let's go through the walks. And I'm not gonna rewatch it because I'm pretty sure it's seared into my brain at this point. I rem I discussed this with some of you in the Kingdom Discord when I found out who won. So you guys got my initial reaction. That's the, that's what happens when you're in the, when you're in the Discord, okay? Because they know I had some things to say. Let's talk about the walks though. All right, here's Anne. Okay, boom, boom. Do you see the chain links on her hips and how jiggly and thumpy those chains are? It's because of how heavy her walk is. That's why, and that's proving it right there. If you have a smooth walk, that really should just sway and glide across your hips. It shouldn't be bouncing and bumbling off of your hips. You see how her chains are not 
clunking against her skin. They're not flailing, they're not bouncing, they're not boinging. It's because her walk was smooth. Same the girl coming from behind her. Her walk is smooth, so you're not seeing those chains jump up and down off of her hips. They're swaying back and forth, but they're not jumping up and down. They're not all over the place. They keep their shape and form because her walk is smooth. That is the proof right there of a smooth walk. Thank you. When she was walking, that swimsuit presentation was not something that I would consider graceful. Her footsteps were extremely heavy, meaning they weren't gliding. She wasn't gliding through her motions. They were, she was like stomping down the runway. And then she got to the end of the runway and just kind of hit a pose that I would expect a preteen, like 12 year old to do. Like if you told a, a child to pose for you, they throw their arms up and they try to like do a jerky pose. There was nothing graceful about that performance. Um, I could see that she was trying to give face, but it just didn't mesh well. And then when we got to the evening gown, it was the same, same issue, but a bit worse because it's evening gown. You're supposed to have an extra level of grace and poise when you're in an evening gown. And even in swimwear, you could see her legs were walking side by side. They weren't walking, like if you visualize and walking down the runway, her footsteps weren't one in front of the other. They were side by side as if she was walking down like a street to go shopping or something at Walmart, pick up grapes at Target, I don't know. And then we get to you evening gown and she's giving us kind of like the same walk. I can appreciate the fact that she tried to use her face, but the technical skills were not there. Yes, she can speak and I, personally love her advocacy. That is my favorite adv advocacy that I heard on that stage was what she was bringing because it is truly relevant. But speaking ability is not going to save you from the more well-rounded competitors that are going to be showing up to Miss Universe. Now I'm thinking from the perspective of the Thailand organization, they have done pretty well training women. So it is possible that they're thinking, if we can get a woman who just has this fantastic personality, a very relevant advocacy and great interview skills, very passionate, we can teach her the technique and she will be a threat for Miss Universe. And at first I was like, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe this would work. And then I, re I realized and remembered that Miss Universe is like in a month, like a month like a month. So it seems Thailand is on the path to prove that they have the most miraculous coaches ever to be conceived on the face of this planet. Because if they're able to turn Anne into a Miss Universe in a month, they are going to usurp every Filipino coach there ever was or has been, because that will be the most miraculous thing I've ever seen in life is if they turn Anne into like a fantastic crowned Miss Universe, like giving the full evening gown performance and everything, I would be floored. I would, it would be the most amazing Miss Universe show we'd ever seen in life. But I'm going to operate in the bounds of my slightly fantastical reality and still say currently, I haven't put out my favorites list, but I can tell you guys right now, I do not expect that Anne would be on my top 10's favorite list. Not right now because of the lack of technical skills that she has. This is not a speaking competition. And honestly, Miss Universe cannot afford to lower their standards. As I said before, if this became primarily a speaking competition, I and many of you would not watch and they would lose their very small, slight number one ranking to Miss Grand, who really does uphold those very high, very intense standards. And yes, personally, I have some of the same issues with Miss Grand, especially when it comes to Anne's advocacy of uh, body positivity and body acceptance and size acceptance. I have that same issue with Miss Grand, but Miss Grand really does uphold those very, very high standards that we all love to watch. So regardless of how fantastic Anne speaks, and yes, she does. She speaks very passionately. She's very articulate. She's very relatable. She is not well-rounded. And until that can be developed, I cannot see her being a top 10 contender for the Mawad crown just yet. And you have to remember, the fan base is a very powerful thing. If Anne were to be crowned 
Miss Universe over the Venezuelans, over the Colombian that they are sending, over the Philippines, the fan base would be up in, in arms. It would, it, would be, it would be awful for that to happen because the fans expect a certain level of standards for Miss Universe to be upheld. The, the fans would go into an entire revolt. And I do believe Miss Universe knows this. They have to uphold those standards. They cannot push aside people like a Valeria Aos or even Miss Universe Philippines, who is a very well-rounded competitor and give it to someone who right now is not. Like, honestly, you guys, it would be pageant civil war. So hopefully the Thailand coaches can refine Anne and put her in a better position to be a viable candidate for the Mawad crown. We will just have to wait and see. But in the comment section below, let me know what you think about the competition of Miss Universe Thailand. Who was your favorite? What were the biggest surprises that you saw during competition? What do you think Anne has to work on to better prepare herself for Miss Universe? Please let us know in the comment section below. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because hello, we're fabulous over here and you know you wanna stay. <laughs> I love you, I will miss you, but you know I will be back in a future video. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,